Hello everyone. Uh, this is me again, Asom Hilmi, Success Partner with OBA Energy, and I will be your moderator in today's webinar. Uh, today's webinar markets the free webinar number 74. You can find all these free webinars on our YouTube channel, recorded and uh, available for uh, for you to revisit from time to time to gain knowledge with us. Uh, before going to uh, our webinar title, Sound of Production. Uh, I'd like to give a typical presentation uh, with uh, short notes about our uh, training services and our available uh, training programs. Uh, so this this uh, this graph uh, shows and represents our. Uh, our services in, in numbers. So you can find that we have different teams in different countries. Uh, we are a group of, of experienced instructors, more than 40 instructors. As you can see that we have uh, conducted more than uh, 35 uh, live courses that are all available now on our website, as I will present soon. Uh, on the lower right side of my screen, you can see that we already have reached many places worldwide. Also, you can see that, uh, as I just mentioned, that we have conducted more than 70 webinars that are available on our, sorry, uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, so this is our ninth wave of uh, live courses. We have already finished two of them. And the uh, third one is about to start uh, interesting course about applied reservoir geomechanics with our guest speaker today, in, uh, Dr. Muhammad Omar. This, uh, this program will start on the 16th of September and end by the uh, 21st of September. Uh, also, for, for the last uh, course in this uh, series of live courses, we have an interesting course titled Stuck by Prevention that will start by the end of September and uh, finish by the 5th of October. You can see also that we have break days that colored in uh, light, light black color. Uh, if you'd like to register in one of these courses, uh, if you are an early bird for these, you can get a good discount for your purchase. So for applying for this uh, courses, you can scan this QR code or by filling in the registration form that I have just sent in the, in the chat area. Same for our uh, bundles of courses. As I just mentioned, we have uh, more than 35 recorded courses on our uh, website. Uh, as you see on my screen, categorized in different uh, bundles, there is about engineering, uh, production technology, rig and rig location, uh, open and case to whole logging, as well as some miscellaneous uh, courses. Uh, this is how the bundles look on our website. So I really encourage you to uh, go visit our website. Uh, same as for the live courses, this is another QR code for you to scan if you would like to uh, get some of these courses. And I'd like to highlight that uh, as many as you get from these courses, you will get uh, a big discount as well. Uh, also, the the link for applying for these recorded courses is, is in the, the chat area, number three, in, the, in our recorded courses. We also have the mentorship program. Uh, we, we, we actually have really successful stories from this program. You design your own learning journey based on your time. Uh, you choose an instructor and uh, not related to a syllabus of training program, you you design your learning journey with us. Uh, this is how uh, the website looks. And uh, another screenshot, go type obacourses.com and you'll find our website and uh, check all of our services that are available. Uh, some, some lovely pictures from our uh, gallery. 
for some of the internship programs that we have conducted here in Egypt for some groups of students from different continents like Lebanon. Uh, as you enroll with us in any of these services, you become one of our uh, ambassadors and you really enjoy uh, great offers that we occasionally send to uh, our ambassadors. Uh, just a few roles before introducing our guest speaker for today. Uh, sorry for muting your microphones and please keep your camera uh, off as well uh, to help us all get a clear understanding of today's discussion. If you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please put your question in the chat area and I will be happy to read your questions to our guest speaker. If you if you are not joining with your real name, please uh, go uh, rename yourself. Uh, if you are joining with like something Galaxy or iPhone, uh, go rename yourself as we will be sending uh, certificates of attendance based on the names uh, just in one week from today. So our guest speaker for today, uh, I also would like to highlight that this is not the first webinar for uh, Dr. Muhammad Omar. This is the second one. The first one was an introduction to uh, reservoir geomechanics applications of reservoir geomechanics. You can check this also on the on the YouTube channel. Uh, and and today's is one of these applications, which is sand production. Uh, Dr. Muhammad is a senior reservoir engineer in Ambedco here in Egypt with more than 11 years of experience. He is a former reservoir team leader, one of the, one of the team uh, members that established the reservoir engineering team in South Abu's Neyma Petroleum Company here in Egypt too. He is a PhD student in Cairo University. Uh, his thesis uh, is titled Novel Sand Production Prediction Model. He gained his uh, master's degree uh, from uh, London South Bank University in UK. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, are you still sharing? And uh, over to you to start the opener. Okay, thank you, Hassan. I hope my voice is clear. Please yes, assure that clear. too. Yes, very clear. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for attendance, and I hope that this webinar will be beneficial and is is a good for everyone. Uh, second thing, I'm always happy to uh, cooperate with OPA uh, and, and meet with you, all of you, and it's a pleasure to cooperate with them. Follows. Today we're going to start uh, to talk about and have a small discussion about reservoir geomechanics application. One of the applications that's used in reservoir geomechanics, which is sand production prediction. And okay, uh, engineer Assam has introduced me very well, so we can skip this. Uh, Slide by that you only know and as he mentioned. We just have a like a tip of the day. Uh, don't let your comfort zone be your prison. Always try to get out of your comfort zone and to learn more things and to increase your powers and strengths and getting out of your comfort zone may be tiring, but it will make you strong. What is the main points that we're going to cover in this webinar? We're going to have a small chat about the main applications of reservoir geomechanics. So everyone will be on the same line uh, if he missed the first webinar. We're going to talk about sand production phenomena, how does it occur and its impacts and what is the problems caused by sand production. We're going to talk about the effect of reservoir depletion and how is very a serious problem. And then we're going to talk about some production prediction techniques, the different 
some production techniques. Okay. Introduction. Reservoir mechanics is a science that combines both mechanics science and the earth. Actually, geomechanics is composed of two words, which is geo, meaning earth in Greek, and mechanics, which is relating to the science of mechanics, that is dealing with the stresses and strains and the effects of stresses on the body. Uh, the first uh, application we can use is detecting the overpressure zone, detecting the group pressure and how to deal with the overpressure zone. There are three types of reservoir or group pressure. One is uh, hydrostatic group pressure or abnormal group pressure and subnormal group pressure. Okay, there are different reasons or uh, that can cause abnormal reservoir pressure. And we have to, de during drilling, we have to know the pool pressure and determine the pool pressure to have a safe journey during our drilling to the reservoir. Also, reservoir geomechanics plays an important role in determining the casing points to optimize the casing program we are going to deal with. It's also used in well burn stability studies to prevent stuck pipes, prevent loss of circulation, and to keep the hole in a good shape uh, to have a safe journey, as we mentioned before. Also, it's used in the completion integrity or sanding. We have to determine if the, our reservoir is, or we're going to face sand production or not to have optimized completion program. It's also used in hydraulic fracturing operations because we want to optimize the hydraulic fracturing implementation to ensure maximizing the productivity of the well. It's also used in studying the full stability, especially if we're going to do uh, injection. As we will see that increasing the pool pressure will have effect and make both tensile uh, failure of the rock um, and also study the compaction of the reservoir or, and study the fracturing of the reservoir. Okay, all of these applications are the main applications of reservoir geomechanics in oil and gas industry and also extended outside the Oil and gas, where it's used in carbon dioxide storage, capture and storage, and also in geothermal energy. So, reservoir geomechanics is a big world that has proven its importance and its necessity in, in understanding. So, we can use it. Either inside the oil and gas industry or outside the industry. Okay. What is sand production? Okay. Sand production is caused by three events. The first is the failure of the rock around the well pool due to the stresses acting on the rock. If the stresses acting on the rock exceeds its strength, Sample uh, the rock will fail and be crushed around the wood pool. Followed, there must be a hydromechanical failure of the rock of the crushed zones, and thus is carry, carriage of the parts or minerals of the crushed sands into from the near wood pool into your wood pool. So, first, you ha will have a mechanical failure, then you will have followed by the hydromechanical. Failure. And the hydromechanical failure is mainly uh, affected by the rate of production and the viscosity of the of the produced fluid. Okay. Inside the whirlpool, there will be two passes for the sand particles 
either it will drop into your whirlpool, causing the loss of productive to the perforation, as it is blocking some of the perforation intervals, or the sand production starts its air journey from down to the surface. And it's also dependent on the capability of the fluid to carry the sand particles to the surface. So you can have a problem of sand production, but you don't see it on the surface because it's just filling up your whirlpool. And it can be seen on the surface in a small rate and you can handle it. So sand production monitoring is not that easy. So, and it may cause a lot of problem because some production inside the whirlpool will may cause the, the full blockage of your uh, perforation and you will need like some more cover or maybe you will need to do a sampling or collect the sand from inside the perforation. So, it's a big issue. But once it's produced, it's a bigger issue and will may cause a lot of problems leading to losing the well, erosion, and uh, HSC uh, problems. Well, is some production minor problem limited to some countries? No, it's a global problem. It's all around the world. As you can see, this is a, a graph or figure that shows the Schlumberger completion sand control equipment worldwide. This is only Schlumberger, but there are other companies and these other companies are also having uh, sand control equipment. So you can see it's straight wide world. So it's not a minor problem is problems that is worldwide. What are the types of sand production? Types of sand production. First, transient sand production that is followed for a short time and is followed by the perforation activities. Once you have perforated the well, sometimes you can see some sand production at the beginning of the life of the well for short time, short period. Also acidizing, where once the well is acidized, the rock starts to be weaker, and sand production is executed. But if it's short time, you can handle it. It's not that big deal. Okay, for transient, it's not that big deal. We can handle it, especially it will be in short term, it will be short amount, so it's easily handling. But in continuous sand production, if it's below the limits or below the handling uh, limits of your well, of your cost, you can live with it. The problem comes when it is catastrophic, it's above the limits, and it's causing a lot of problems for your well, for your gauze, for your manifolds, for your chalk, and maybe you cannot, it's causing erosion. Okay, and if erosion is causing you completion, you're risking the loss of the well, and it may be needs work over more money. And this in because you didn't put uh, did put sand control equipment because you didn't predict that there will be sand production. We have to say now that maybe sand production that doesn't start in the beginning of the well, it may be executed after some days or some months, depending on the if you're having a reservoir pressure depletion that will may cause the same production and your rock can handle in the beginning of the well, but doesn't handle later. 
and we have to take in consideration also water production because water production encourage sand production also okay so maybe at zero water cut there is no sand production but after time when water starts producing you may have sand production so all of these scenarios should be taken in consideration you're not talking about the beginning of the life of the reservoir or the well you're taking on the during the whole life of the reservoir or the well okay and if you don't predict it, if you don't see it coming, you will have big issues. Like this is real photos, okay? So you can see here the manifold is totally eroded, and the gas now is coming out into your sea, which is the problem. And you will have to close your oil from the down safe, subsurface safety valve and lose production for months, maybe until you, you solve this issue. So you're going to spend CAPEX or OPEX, you're going to lose production. And so there is a lot of money, you're losing a lot of also this separator and it's full sand in, the, in your separator because you didn't see it coming, you didn't monitor it. Right. So, and you will have to stop the whole production from all wells, except or, uh, or lose that. Uh, and during the fill up of your separator, the efficiency of the separator is going down and down. And you see, can see chalk completion or this erosion. And sometimes you can. We face it in real life and we face it in fields as repetitive, especially in the beginning of the, uh, the world production. As we mentioned, the beginning of the world production, during, after perforation, we face transient sand production and you choke down the well and the well head pressure doesn't go down because your choke is not functioning well due to the erosion of the choke, as you can see. So you cannot control the productivity of the well, you cannot control the whole head pressure because the shock is already rooted. Okay. First of all, we need to know what stresses that may cause the mechanical failure of the rock. Actually, in reservoir on downhole. There are three main acting stresses. Overburden stress, which is vertical stress. And there are two horizontal stresses acting on the rock. Which are minimum horizontal stress or minimum horizontal stress or maximum horizontal stress. Okay, minimum and horizontal. Overburden stress is the weight of your overburden layers above each other. It's dependent on force, your density lock, or density of the formations you're, you're drilling through or you're passing through it, and the true vertical depth is just through GH. It's a typical Roche edge. It's easy to, com to compete. Maximum horizontal stress and minimum horizontal stress are two horizontal stresses that are caused due to the overburden stress acting on the rock. So if we have a stress overburden stress acting in this way, vertically, two stresses will be coming out of the rock and these stresses are perpendicular to each other. You can easily see that each stress is particular to the two other stresses. Okay. This is maximum and minimum due to the anisotropy count in your reservoir. Okay. This is a more complicated thing because in reservoir mechanics, there's anisotropy always. There's always an anisotropy everywhere. It's not symmetric. 
it's easier to deal with steel, steel in, uh, in the structure because it is isotropy. Same metal, same everything, same properties, same mechanical properties of the steel. But in rocks, there are different properties, cementation, uh, consolidation, uh, strength. It varies from one point to another point. Beside it, this is a complexity of reservoir geomechanics. One issue that you, there is effect of the cool pressure. Cool pressure plays an important role in you in the uh, in the reservoir geomechanics because there is what we see is effective stress. Effective stress is your acting stress, in direct, normal stress, in direction, and taking from it the pool pressure. So pool pressure, the fluid is supporting the rock. Again, is the stress is acting on it. Okay, and this is a simple form. Actually, is fixed stress is equal to your acting stress minus beta, which is pi coefficient, which is a mechanical property, depending on the how much the rock will allow the 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 fluid to compete with it to help it against the rock minus pool pressure. Okay. What happens during reservoir depletion, reservoir pressure depletion, as you produce your reservoir pressure decreases because this is the energy of your reservoir. Going back, the pressure is decreasing, which means your effective stress is increasing. This is why maybe the rock can handle stress in the, in the beginning of its life, but later on, it cannot handle it because the pool pressure has decreased, so effective stress acting on the rock increases. What we're seeing here is a Moore's column envelope. Okay, it's a linearized one. And in this area above the line is a failure. If your stress circle passes this straight line, your rock will easily fail. If it's below the line, your rock will can handle the stresses acting on it. Okay, during pressure depletion, we can see the circle of stress increases and it can pass. So here it, in the beginning, which is the green, effective stress acting in the rock is below the linearized line of more envelope. And as the pressure depletion, which is in red, the circus comes larger and your effective stresses and increases later on it passes the Moore's failure envelope causing the failure of the rock increasing the pool pressure which make the Moore's uh, stress circle smaller but increasing it to a limit because if it goes to the other way, it can may cause the tensile fracture of the rock. Because fracture is reduced from tensile fracture of the rock. What's fracture cause? How is fracture cause? Is injecting more and more pressure against the rock until it fails in tension. As for the sand production, it is caused by the compression failure of the rock. Okay, so in reservoir geomechanics, we study both phenomena 
as it is the of this phase in compression or in tension. How we can how what how we can say that rock is strong or weak? This is important. Does all rocks exhibit some production? No, they don't exhibit some production. Not all rocks. Some of them, yes. Actually, seventy percent of oil and gas reservoir are found what we call in unconsolidated sand or weakly cemented sand. Okay, that will sure have some production phenomena. Okay, there are three, four types of sand. Unconsolidated. What's unconsolidated? The rock isn't held together. How do we say is what consolidates sand rocks together is the cementing material. What is the type of your cementing material? How much you have? And it's effective, of course, by your poor rusting, how much process. Some people relate the strength of the rock to the porosity. Okay. As the porosity increases, cementing materials decreases, the rock becomes weaker. Some of them compared to the minerals of the sand. Of course, the rock is composed of different minerals. What type, what is the grain size? What is the sedimentation uh, uh, environment? Also, based on personal and how much the rock is strong or weak. Okay. In very constructed sand, which is this one, you'll not see some production. In weekly, you can see it from day one. Strongly, you can see it from day one or later. The main problem is what, what we see the strong, but later it's not that strong because the stress is increased on it. As we mentioned before, the effective stress acting across the rock increases with time as the reservoir pressure depletion continues. Okay. And actually, when we need, when we drill a well, we don't want to do a workover and install some production control equipment later in after two years or three years we want it for, to live for as much as we can if we can prevent work over later let's do it okay so uh, that types of sand and the strength of sand depends on the, how much your rock is consolidated. It, and the consolidation depends mainly on your cementing materials, the minerals of the rock, and how much the minerals base up to the strength. Some minerals are strong, some minerals are weak. How can we describe the wait. how can we describe the rock strength? We can describe either by cohesion or internal friction factor. Okay. And we can see cohesion there is a there is a large variation, okay? As for the internal friction, there is more variation. So it's more likely that we have compared the strength of the rock by mentioning the cohesion force or strength, okay? Not by the internal friction, okay? We can see that sandstone is not that strong okay and the variation of the cohesion or the strength of the rock in sandstone is not that strong we can see that basalt is more stronger limestone there's a very large variation monstone there's a lot of variation also so but what is 
cohesion and friction, inter or internal friction factor. Let's go back to this chart. Cohesion in Moore's uh, filler envelope is an envelope that can show you how much your rock is strong. Okay. And if we go through, we can go through later about how to draw Moore's column envelope. You can study it, it's easy. And the interception of this linearized line, it determines how much your rock is strong. As we mentioned before, just if it's if your strength intersects above the line or goes above the line, it fails because it, the strength of the rock is determined through this flat line. Okay. So cohesion strength is the intersection of this line with your y-axis. This is S node and sometimes called C node. Okay. And your slope is the internal co friction coefficient or factor. So drawing this envelope, we can determine, okay, what is the strength of the rock? How we determine it? By doing a lot of mechanical tests, like in the axial test, in the axial test, or triaxial test, okay? By carrying out this uh, test, we can draw the Moore's failure envelope, okay? So, cohesion and internal friction, we can determine the strength of the rock and we can compare between each rock. But does it mean if the rock is weak, weaker than if rock A is weaker than rock B? Does it mean weak, rock A must have some production while rock B will not? No, because maybe the conditions for rock A, which is weaker, it can be handled. The rock can handle it. It can handle the amount of stresses acting on it. But rock B, which is stronger than rock A, but there is a numerous stress effect. Poor pressure is not supporting properly. You will have some protection of P, which is stronger. Okay. So the question remains, should we install sand control equipment? First, what is it? Sand control equipment can, can do production limitation due to the skin caused by the sand production completion. It's completion, okay, and the pseudo skin. Okay, so if we don't need sand control equipment, why install it? We pay for it, it will cost the well, increase the wells uh, cost, and in the end, it's not beneficial. We don't need it. Okay. So sand control equipment should be installed if we see we know we need it. Well, another thing, as we mentioned before, I can see we're not having sand production now. Are we going to have it? We have to study the reservoir pressure depletion, how much your reservoir will be depleted. Is it a strong aquifer? So your pool pressure will maintain for a long time or can maintain for a lifetime. I will answer your questions at the end, sorry, okay? But yes, perfusion can, can cause some production for transient time, as you mentioned. Okay. Water production. We have to study if water starts producing, but how, how will it affect your consolidation? How will it affect with if you're going to decrease your consolidation to a limit that the rock will become weaker 
and sand production will start over. Okay? Is everything clear? It's not clear, please send it to me, okay? World production oil industry is about your revenue, its potential. Its potential is related to your capex, which is the cost for doing well and completion equipment, all of these capex. OPEX, you're running well, you don't need to work over the OPEX. The risk, because we need to minimize capex, we need to minimize our OPEX, we need to minimize our risk. And then on the other hand, we need to increase production. We need to increase, decrease, sorry, decrease the cost per barrel, okay? So we need to decrease our cost per barrel or and your scaf, okay? So we don't need to an historic that we don't need. We don't need to, we don't want to have a, a high risk of some production that may cause bad impacts. It can cause you to lose a well, it can cause you to lose some of your situation. It can cause that you cannot control your well. Okay, like we saw how it caused a large hole in your manifold and you started having gas into your sea or oil. And we all see how much is it's costly if you have an HAC problem. Okay. We you don't need to install our sun control equipment that will minimize our or decrease our production and we don't need it. So it's a critical issue for us. First of all, we have several sun production techniques that has developed with time. First, with the field observation, you can see it's a primary method, depending on some people analyze sun production in some conditions. I related this condition to sun production. It's a primary method. Okay. Then there is another technique which is a seat wall cylinder test, which is a physical experimental by taking out a pool from your reservoir and starting running experiments on it and seeing if your frog will be able to handle the stresses. After that, we started developing analytical relationships or solutions. But the problem with analytical relationships is that. It applies on current one-time condition. It doesn't take into consideration the changes that may occur on your reservoir, on your rock, on your well, on, and how much your stresses will vary with time. So it's very limited to one-time condition. Then we started developing our numerical models, simulation models, We're coupling with your simulation models or prediction models. And there is two ways, either finite element method, which is quantum, or discrete element method, which is this quantum. Uh, physical, we, we, we cover it. Okay, we cover it. We see the, how much, how the experiment is carried out. Okay. Other. Okay, there's uh, another test, which is, I'll send it to you, okay? There's the advanced, also advanced six volts under test, because this is the main one for sun production, okay? What are the, field observation, what are the main observations that we can relate to some production? As for the reservoir, is the pool pressure, 
as we mentioned, as both pressure decreases, uh, effective stress of uh, the rock increases, permeability within to the rock, frosty, flow type, heavy oil are more common to cause sand production. How much is your trench radius? Your reservoir thickness, as completion, pool orientation, pool diameter, addition time, sand control method, size of the tubing, the rock strength, acting stresses, depths. Some people relate to sand production at certain depths to be caused. Production, the amount of fluoride. Drawdown as the drawdown increases. Okay, I'll answer it in the end. Okay. Damage, spin up, artificial water gas pin. Some people started relating all these parameters. To sand production. Some people related one parameter, some people combined two parameters, some people started to combine multi parameters. Okay. A multi parameter means not some people used your network to determine if sand production will occur or not. Okay. We mentioned that there is a physical, which is experimental. One of the methods is the stick core cylinder test. For a cylinder, size L, having, which is hollow, where the external diameter is three times your internal diameter, and your length is twice your diameter, okay? And you start applying axial stress on your plug, okay? And monitor at which, stre at which stress it will collapse, okay? And from this, we can study if the rock is strong or not, okay? Of course, here, we're just simulating experimentally Experimentally, the, the perforation interval, okay, in around your whirlpool, okay, it's like this hollow is a perforation interval and it extends to deeper into your reservoir, okay. I'll explain what I'm calling, okay, I'll explain everything, okay. Analytical, we'll have example for analytical solution, okay? Started putting relationships or correlations, equations to determine at which conditions we'll have some production, okay? But as we mentioned, it's, it's a one time uh, solution, doesn't take in consideration what will happen later, like water production occurs, okay? How much it will uh, affect your strength of the rock. It doesn't take into consideration any changes in your rock, okay? And as we mentioned, it's based on your tensile failure going to have a fracture or this shear failure or compression failure, which is sand production. Okay. Mm -hmm. Modeling, it allows analysis of the all involved physical phenomena during the whole life of your well and reservoir. Okay. Taking consideration the changes in your production, in your philosophy, rates, conditions, water production starts, Water pressure is not started, poor pressure decrease, takes in consideration your, the prediction, the development plan you're willing to do. Okay. And it takes in consideration 
the effect of other feel, other words being produced around the well you are interested of. Okay. And we in modeling of the same production and numerical, it requires two types of failure and mechanical, the modeling of the mechanical instability around the whirlpool and the hydromechanical instability due to the fluid flow original problems caused by the fluid flow. There are two types of numerical methods. One method is quantum approach, and the other method is uh, this quantum. Quantum means, as we mentioned, finite energy method. This quantum is a discrete energy method. Hybrid modeling, and this, uh, this mentions that this quantum is very complicated because it goes deeper into the rock, in the rock, and sees how the minerals and how the cementing materials acts with your minerals and with the grains and how it holds the grains together. So it's just, you can say it's a microscopic modeling. While quantum, it deals with parts of, of the rocks, taking into consideration that it cannot be uh, split it into fragments, okay? So this quantum requires a large modeling time, large amount of information, but it captures more data, okay? Hybrid modeling was like a in-between solution where it combines quantum and this quantum approaches where you can use the, this quantum approach around the world pool in the new report area, while the quantum in the far end of your whirlpool, far end of your uh, far farther from your whirlpool. Okay. Okay. Let's have a like a small comparison between quantum approach and this quantum approach. Quantum approach are treated and assumed as continuous. Okay. It's more like like uh, the simulation modeling we do in Petra diffusivity equation, where you sp split your reservoir into number of blocks, okay? It's a continuity assumption because the material can be divided into small fragments, as we mentioned. It doesn't capture local discontinuities and production phenomena, okay? As this quantum, we're going to look deeper into your rock. We're going to look deeper about the, how the rock is hold. It requires more data, thin sections. It requires what is the types of minerals, complete analysis of your rock that is carried out by the geologists you have. What is the minerals? How is it combined? What is your cementing material? Of course, cementing materials Types of cementic materials acts as an important one and how much you consider it sent. Okay. Application of reservoir geomechanics in a rock, uh, so sand, uh, sand production, okay, has a lot of steps. First, we need to determine the vertical stress, okay? Then we need to determine your pool pressure, okay? Then, of course, pool pressure in uh, permeable zones is easy. Build up RFT, you can determine static pressure surface, you can easily determine Can easily to the mine during the reservoir. As for the shale, we can determine it from our impermeable zones. You can determine by the porosity compaction. Okay. Rock strands, we can determine from core tests, logs, cuttings, wood core failure, and nesses. SH maximum and SH minimum, we can determine it from a heap of tests and many tracks, losses, image logs. And as we mentioned, 
SH maximum, SH minimum are perpendicular to each other. So if we found and we know what is the direction of one, we can determine the direction of the other. Okay. And these are same, some correlations for determining SH max. As for the least present source stress, can be determined from your kick of tests. Okay. And there is also correlation. If there is no leak of test, we can determine from correlation easily. Here we're going to cover how some production can occur in different crops. UCS, what is UCS? Let's go back to show what is UCS. You can see this curve, okay? Point one is the uh, confining stress acting on the rock, which is a minimum stress acting on the rock. Point two is uh, where, at what stress the rock fails. Point one is zero, and uh, we can do it in laboratory, okay, or experimentally. There is no confining stress that will hold your rock together or support your rock. The stress would be minimum, so it would be like something like that. This is UCS. What is the confining stress? Sorry about that. Whereas your confining stress is zero. So there is no support, there is this unit access stress of the rock. Okay. So as UCS increases, it means the rock is more stronger. Okay. So the green line represents if you will pour. The bottom hole flow and pressure is the reservoir pressure is the same as the reservoir pressure. If you're having it at the beginning of the well, you can go to 800 PW. Your PW is 800. After some depletion, if your PWF for the rock is 190, 1950, which is your UCS. Okay. So at the beginning, you need, don't have some production because you can go to 800 beside PWF, but after some time, your reservoir division occurred and your reservoir pressure has reached 600 in case you're having, if your PWF goes to 1,500, some production starts to occur. In case of the UCS is 200, 2,450, you can go deeper. If, you, if the rock UCS is 3,160, there's no some production. Some production starts from point this point, where the reservoir pressure is 5,000. It only starts if your reservoir, if you will pour, Pressure is around like 200. So if you are sure that your reservoir pressure will not go like here, and your rock is very strong, following the red, you can you can say I don't need some production control equipment. But if you are having rock. Of strength 1950, you're expecting some production because your BWF, of course, will go below 3000 or so. Of course, if you are having a rock having poorer strength, or weaker, you can expect that it will be from this line or trend. So, you're expecting some production is more. So this is the analytical solution that showing different rock strengths and how much some production will, will occur or will happen. It doesn't mention how much 
it will be producing. This is an issue because maybe I have some production, but the rates are very weak and doesn't cause me a problem. Okay, it can be handled, it can be easily. Doesn't I don't need to worry about it. Okay. Now for questions, let's go. There are several questions that have been asked. Identify catastrophic sand production. Catastrophic sand production is the amount of sand that may, that will cause problems to you, like erosion of your material. So it depends on your competition material, how much you can uh, hold against your sand and how much you can it's also a function of your fluid type that you're producing because catastrophic sand production in case of sand, the plant's flow will be lower than in oil because there is not that. If you're having not the plant flow, lemon flow to be easily produced, okay? So it mainly depends on your materials that you're having, your condition you're producing in, and the type of fluid you're producing how much amount that will fill up your separators and how much you can handle the sand production in your separators on your cost because you need to clean out the sand in your separator or cost area, okay? How to find the solution for uncles. The sand reservoir, you, of course, if it's weekly or it's unconsolidated, you will have to install sand control equipment. And and to install sand control equipment, it's easy. Uh, there are several methods like graphic bags, screens, uh, frag pack. Okay. Is it clear now, round? Water cooling. Okay. I need to bring us like a photo of it from the. So give me like. One Okay, water cooling is, that is mainly caused by fast production of the oil. Okay, and as we know, the mobility of the water is more faster than the rock and it can easily penetrate the oil. Okay, and once the water has found its way to the perforation, okay, and it will start cooling around your perforation and isolating the oil from the perforation. So you're just producing water, okay, or in a big amount, okay? 
this is what occurring. Is it clear now? I wish it's clear. Um, Mr. Abbas, what's he? Uh, can you explain? Do you want to know how do we design the, the bottom hole completion as uh, some production technique, control techniques? Am I stand, understanding right? How do we manage, do you manage some production effects in multi-phase flow measurements? Actually, I don't have this answer now. I'm, I'm more related to studying how sand production can start and how to predict it, okay? But I'll look through it and I will send it to, post it in Uber, okay? I'll link it in and I'll send them. Uh, designing the bottom hole completion, we can discuss it in later in another webinar because it will take time, yeah? Okay. Is it clear now, as we uh, so you can Is there any comment. question? Uh, everyone, uh, thank you for joining. If you have more questions, please uh, put it in the chat now. Also, I'd like to remind you with the feedback link. I just sent it in the chat box, and I will send it again. Uh, one more uh, reminder also for the reservoir uh, geomechanics. Uh, training a program that will start 16th of September. Also, we'll send the link of registration. So send the no more questions. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad, for this uh, fruitful conversation about sand production. And I am sure that there is more to tell during the course. So everybody interested in joining us, uh, don't hesitate if you have any questions. Thanks, and see you in the next webinar. Thank you, Engineer Tom. I had the pleasure, and thanks for this wonderful arrangement. And meet you soon. Yeah.